Good evening. Welcome to Wonderfully Whole Conversations. I am Judy Hangwerker, founder of Wonderfully Whole, a wellness organization that helps Christian women leaders steward their bodies for success. And this is a platform that really highlight men and women who are living the lifestyle and who are impacting their generation and generations to come by who they are and their message. Today, I am really excited <laughs> to have someone who is my, my doctor, one of my doctors, and he's also a good friend. Uh, his name is Dr. Ralph Manfredi. He has been my chiropractor for over 18 years, and it, 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 he, I've seen him um, heal certain things in my body through his expertise, and he's a man of God and, and true pro. He, he's a nutritionist. He, he, he specializes in functional and sports medicine. Today, we will be discussing the importance of chiropractic healthcare, natural healing, and divine healing. To share with our audience today how chiro chiropractic healthcare plays an important role in us being healthy and whole. Welcome, Dr. Manfredi. I'm so happy to have you on. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you. Before we go into our discussion, I want to read Dr. Manfredi's bio. Dr. Manfredi is the founder of the new Fairfield Chiropractic Center for over 38 years. He practices functional medicine in addition to standard chiropractic care. A graduate of St. John's and Bridgeport He's a graduate of St. John's and Bridgeport Universities. He's also a, a graduate of Pi High Omega Honor Society. He's a diplomat of the American Chiropractic Board of Sports Physicians. He has earned a post-doctorate degree in sports injury, which allows him the expertise and experience to treat all types of sports in injuries. Most recently, he earned a postdoctorate degree from the Council of Diagnosis of Internal Disorders. This ACA recognized body of professionals specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of internal disorders through the use of nutritional methods. Over the years, Dr. Manfredi has treated and brought healing to thousands of his patients. And his, his, his belief is, as long as you are alive, you can get better. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Manfredi, I, you know, I, I am so excited that you are on because I believe our audience, especially in this time that we are going through with, with the pandemic, that we need to know how to take care of our bodies. And we know God created this body beautiful. It's a masterpiece. And you have been in uh, chiropractic uh, healthcare for years, but be, uh, and you have led a successful practice. But I want to find out what made you go to, into this um, type of medicine, chiro chiropractic healthcare. Well, you know, um, I've had the blessing of had a, having had a good chiropractic physician when I was a little when I was a little boy. I had uh, some leg pains that no one could seem to resolve. I had seen um, a podiatrist and an orthopedist. My parents were uh, very good parents. They tried to take me anywhere they could to get me better, and it turned out that um, the condition I had um, was actually coming from my lower back. The chiropractor adjusted me just a couple times, and uh, my year-long, I think it was about a year-long struggle with leg pain was resolved. So um, that was our uh, one of our many experiences with chiropractic. And, you know, I knew that I wanted to be in the healthcare field. And uh, as one door uh, closed, another door opened. And 
uh, I do believe that the, the Lord led me to uh, chiropractic. I wouldn't want to be in any other form of health care, um, actually. So um, it's uh, God's grace that brought me into chiropractic. But as a, as a student, I gave it, uh, you know, 110 percent to uh, to study as hard as I could and, and to be the best chiropractic physician I could. And uh, that's what led me to continue my studies in sports injury care and uh, internal medicine because I, I saw chiropractic as a, a platform for um, natural healing that, uh, you know, was uh, just very open to, uh, uh, to expansion. And, uh, you know, we tried to include a lot of um, additional things besides the, the practice of the art and science of chiropractic. So uh, in addition to, you know, really good uh, philosophy and, and science and art in chiropractic, I tried to add the nutritional part. And, uh, you know, as, as you know, you are what you eat. That's so it. When, um, that, uh, it's hard to heal. You know, it was difficult to get patients well when their lifestyle was uh, af uh, affected by their diet, right? So we had to teach them how to eat well, how to supplement when they, when they needed it, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how to make some lifestyle changes so that they could, in fact, in fact be made whole, as you, uh, as you say in, you know, wonderfully whole. <laughs> Try to get people to be truly whole. And that really does include body, mind, and spirit in, in my mind. And That's it. So I'm not so, afraid to pray for people. Uh, you know, we had a man uh, just today, as a matter of fact, who frankly uh, would probably be a candidate for surgery even this week as his spine is so damaged. But um, he wanted to try some conservative care first. It's, it's uh, prudent to do so. So we took him on as a patient, and uh, uh, I said to him, "Would you mind if we uh, if we said a prayer for you as well?" And he said, "Oh, I would love that." And uh, you know, so uh, in, you know, you, you got to apply uh, science, but you also have to apply faith in life, and uh, especially now, you know, like you mentioned before about the pandemic, and uh, I've seen such a you know a fear that's been placed on uh, the people of the United States and even God's people. And, uh, you know, it's not that's not God's way for us. We have to no. try. We have to, uh, as you said before, uh, consider the masterpiece of, of the human body, the immune system. It's much yes. stronger than any mask. And if you take care of yourself, you probably can fight off any virus with no problem that, at all. So. That, that is true. Dr. Manfredi, for people who are not familiar with chiropractic health care, um, could you share a little more? about that side the basic. <laughs> chiropractic is the art and science of things that are natural we have uh, come to appreciate the dynamic uh, function of the spine in terms of uh, not only biomechanics and the way you move but also in the delivery of the nervous system's ability to carry its, its signals so we really believe in uh, chiropractic as um a central part of the healthcare system. And what we do as chiropractors is we do a physical exam as any regular medical doctor would do, but we incorporate uh, an examination of your spine to see how uh, the biomechanics of your spine are operating. Is there an area where you've got some restriction, mm -hmm. an area where the vertebrae can't move properly or, or potentially uh, moving too much? Either one of these cases, either not enough movement or too much movement in the spine can cause damage. We call it a subluxation. Subluxation yes. is, a, is not the same as a dislocation. It's a little bit less, but it happens all the time with stress, with lifting, with sports injuries. And people develop subluxations and they start to develop back pain. We mm -hmm. want to correct that, right? In addition to that, sometimes the nervous system can be triggered by these subluxations and things like headaches or even digestive disturbances, um, sometimes even asthma can be made worse with um, mm. the irritation of the nervous system. So there is some overlap uh, with treating the spine and other symptoms as well. And, and that's why chiropractic has a reputation for treating things besides back pain. Um, in my opinion, you know, if we take good care of the spine, as chiropractors do with x-rays, orthopedic examinations, chiropractic assessment of how the spine moves. If we do those things, we could find out what's wrong with your spine and correct it without surgery and without drugs. 
Uh, we'll use hands-on. Chiropractic is a hands-on. The, the literal uh, definition of chiropractic comes from a weak, a Greek word. Uh, kairos is hands and mm -hmm. practico is to do. So to do or to perform by hand is in fact the definition of chiropractic. So mine is a hands-on type of practice. We do uh, manually manipulate the spine or different joints as we find necessary. Um, and then uh, we apply things like therapy, home exercises, things that help your spine repair. We might include nutrition to help you repair the healing or to support the healing of, let's say, a sprain ligament or a herniated disc. Um, so, you know, we, we, we have, an, I think, all chiropractic physicians who, who remember what they were taught in school uh, apply uh, basic diagnostic skills. For example, if you come to a chiropractor, besides an x-ray, we might order an MRI, or we might need an ultrasound, or we might need some blood work or some urine. These are things that a good chiropractor will do as well. Yes. And, I, and I'm happy that you mentioned that because I, some years ago, um, we brought a friend to you, okay? And she was experiencing a lot of headaches, but she did not want to go to the emergency room. And I remember bringing her to your office and you just looked at her and, and, and you did the, the usual things, you know, looking at her. And then you turned to me and you said, Judy, I wanted to get an MRI. We took her for the MRI and that saved her life. I remember when we, we, when we got back in, that, in, in the house that very day, you called me up and you said, Judy, get her to the emergency room right away. And that, and because of you, your intervention and quick work, this the woman is alive today. So I wanted to thank, thank God for that. These are the things that a, a chiropractic physician is trained to do. We have, yes. our, have you know extensive training in the area of diagnostics, and uh, you know it's very good that that thank God that this uh, this I, I forget her name. What was her name again? Uh, uh, yes, uh, her name was Florence. Right, yes, Florence. Uh, yes. Florence. Thank God Florence was amenable. The problem was she wouldn't go anywhere. You two, you, yourself, and your husband, I recall, wanted to take her to the hospital. Yes. She could only get her to me. And, uh, yes. you know, you guys were doing a great job of intervening already. And I just had to be that springboard that she finally would listen when I told you that I thought she might be in the midst of a, of a stroke, you know, or, and, and I think that's what it was. So, yeah, that, you know, that was, kind of yes. things, yeah, we're trained to pick those things up, obviously. And uh, not every patient is a chiropractic patient. This lady did not need chiropractic care. She needed medical intervention. And, uh, that, you know, you can be it. sure, you can be sure yes. that if you, my, if you come to my office or any chiropractic uh, physician worth his or her salt, they will make the differential diagnosis to get you where you need to go. And that's really important for people to know, right? Yes. A chiropractor yes. is not a massage therapist. We're not a physical therapist. We are trained diagnosticians. We have to be able to make the call as to what is the next step. And, uh, you know, just today I had somebody, we found, uh, unfortunately, some uh, different type of cancer of the spine. And uh, the patient came to me and uh, we had to make those diagnostic calls. We had to order different tests. And uh, the doctor who I eventually sent her to said, Wow, Doc, you made a lot of good calls. You you did this in very wow. quick order. We're really appreciative of what you've done. And I said, well, you know what? I've been trained to do that because I've had good teachers. The people, yes. in, uh, the, the diplomat of the American Chiropractic Board of Internists, they trained us well. And uh, I'm so thankful for, for good, good doctors and teachers that I've had along the way. And that's why I still want to practice. I've been in practice for 38 years. Yes. And I hope I have another, God willing, another uh, 18 or so years to go. And when I'm 80, Amen. I'll take a break. <laughs> Amen. And you know, we need doctors like you. I like the hands-on because sometimes people go to doctors, the doctors don't, they don't even touch them. That's true. But, but you touch them, true. you get to the root cause of a, di of a disease. You, you don't just treat, you don't just give people medication, you go to the root. And sometimes I think even in, in modern medicine today, some people, doctors are just 
give some doctors, I'm not saying all, but some doctors are, are dispensing medication and people are not going to the root cause. And I well, love that. that. Be, Judy, that's philosophy, right? That yes. That's the philosophy of your practice. Whether it's a medical philosophy in general, which I hope is changing, or um, a naturopathic or chiropractic uh, philosophy in general, and that is do not treat symptoms. Try to find the root cause yes. and, and fix it or help the body fix it. That's the way to go. We're not going to cover your symptoms. That's not going to happen. If you come to a doctor who's um, only covering symptoms and you have, let's say, a rotator cuff injury, you have pain in your shoulder or pain in your hip, they may just give you something like a glorified Advil or they mm. may prednisone, right? Yeah. This is all designed to just reduce pain. Our goals, if possible, are to correct the cause. If there's a damaged tissue, to apply therapy to it, whether it's ultrasound, um, you know, diathermy, uh, exercises, nutrients. We want to get your bursa or your rotator cuff or whatever is injured to heal itself so that we don't just cover it with, uh, you know, with a, an Advil or a, or a Motrin. That's definitely a different way to go, you know. I remember when I injured my knee a number of years ago. And, you know, I dance. Yes, you do. Very well. I've seen it. <laughs> and, you came, and I went to you and, and, you, and you looked at me and you said, Judy, if you listen to me, you'll be dancing into your 80s. I think I tore uh, something. In you, my, you tore your, your meniscus. Yeah, I tore my meniscus. And you worked with me you, 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 and you took care of me for a number of weeks or months. Mm -hmm. You also, you prayed with me. And, and some other places, if I had gone to them, they might, might have told me to go and have surgery. But yes. I listened to you, and then you counsel me like certain things that I used to do, running and jumping up on a rock in my backyard. And you, and you counsel me, you said, Judy, slow down on that. And my knee was healed thoroughly. And I was able to go back and dance, do my dancing. I, I love ballet, so I would do some ballet techniques. Because I would like to say that every knee condition uh, that I see, I could treat and help like I did yours. But there are times where we see uh, knee injuries that are involving the ACL or the PCL ligament and those yes. need surgery. But thankfully, a torn meniscus can be treated conservatively with okay. circulation therapy. You use the stationary bike like I asked yes. you. Yes, I did. Time, and you're able to heal. And that's the thing, sports injury care, when you have um, a background in sports injury care, you're able to distinguish the ones that you can help. And then the ones that you can help, you have like a whole protocol, right? You have a time mm -hmm. frame, took us yeah. maybe six or eight weeks to get you back in shape again, but you listened yeah. and, and you got better. If you were to go to um, the standard orthopedic approach for that same injury, they would have operated with arthroscopic. The problem mm -hmm. is that actually cuts pieces of your meniscus away. Mm -hmm. And it does leave you susceptible to arthritis down the road. They'll tell you that. So, yes. you know, we try to do it as conservatively as possible. But there are times, and, you know, my son himself uh, tore his ACL. He said, Dad, can you fix my knee? <laughs> and I said, son, uh, unfortunately, you have a torn ACL. We're going to send you for uh, an, a repair. And so, you know, we have to know the difference between what can and can't be repaired uh, naturally, right? So, yes. um the good news is most of the time you can do it naturally. Oh, good. You were recognized by the U.S. Olympic Committee. Okay. Um, could you talk a little bit about that? Because you're a very humble person. You don't like to speak about. Um, well, you know what? Uh, you, like, you like sports. If you grew up uh, where I grew up in uh, Yonkers, New York, and everybody was a ball player, we, uh, we really did have um, – some appreciation for the great athletes who uh, were at another level. You know, I remember playing one time basketball with a, with a, a professional basketball player. I, I didn't even know he was. And I sat down with my friends and I said, wow, who is that guy? He is just so much better than the rest of us. And he said, you know who that is? You know, that's Gus Williams. He played for the Seattle Supersonics. So 
when when you have an opportunity to uh, give back to the area of sports, you should take it. So what happened is when I became a diplomate of the American Chiropractic Board of Sports Physicians, I found out that I could fill out a volunteer form to um, provide help uh, gratis, that is with no cost, to those in my area who were uh, trying out for the Olympic team or who were actually Olympic athletes. So I signed up. And uh, like I said to you er, earlier in the week, Judy, that there was one guy who I had had the opportunity to help, uh, and he's a runner. You know, it's uh, it's not that I'm that great. What happened is uh, it's, a, it's an ability to volunteer. Once you become a diplomat of sports injury care, then they know you have enough expertise to provide quality care yeah. to an athlete to an athlete who's of that of that grade of uh, skill. So that's what happened. And uh, you know, I hope to hope to have some more athletes come my way. Uh, you know, oh, great, we don't live in an area great, great. Where Olympic training, but you know what's true is uh, I have a professional football player in my office now. I have had some uh, baseball players, professional. And what's nice is you have the ability and the confidence that you can take good care of these people, knowing. Yeah that if they went anywhere else, they might not even get the quality care that they'll get at my office. And I'm very thankful to provide that. And I try to keep my skills up. So, you know, it's a blessing. And yeah. again, you said you said earlier, um, you know, that we pray for people. Uh, here's, here's a little phrase that I'd like to share with our, our the people who are listening. And that is, he who prays without working is in ignorance, but he who works without praying is a fool. Mm, want, I like that. We want to we want to work hard. We want to use the God given skills and science that we know, and we really we want to pray also, right? Because really we know behind it all, behind anything, any hands that we lay on, behind any nutrients we give, the That's Lord true. our Lord our God is our healer, and there is none like Him, and He gets all the glory. So when people get well, whether it's your knee or the guy that just came in that we prayed for. When he gets better, we're going to give God the glory. Amen. 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 Now, could you? We, we have been speaking about natural healing and we introduced a little bit about divine healing. Now, yeah. um, before we go uh, more into divine healing, I want you to touch a little bit about functional medicine. Okay. So, functional medicine simply means. An appreciation all, for all the body systems as a unit. And that's why it's also called integrative medicine. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it integrates the cardiovascular system with the nervous system, with the endocrine system, with the digestive system. And when you have an appreciation for how they all interact, you might be able to get a better handle on how to treat people when they become sick. So yes. that's really what, you know, all good functional medicine doctors are trying to do. We're trying to take a good look at the whole person. We might need to do a urine. We might need to do um, a, a serum analysis or blood analysis. We might need to do an x-ray or a spirometer or anything we need to do to learn about your body. We like to do stool tests because that tells us how you're digesting. And when yes. you put the information together, you can find the things that you know are wrong and you can begin to fix them. And to our amazement, in functional medicine, as you begin to fix the little things that you do find, the other big problems get solved because the body begins to activate its own healing responses. So that's what's in neat about functional medicine. Yes. You know, I often tell people, I'm not that good, but your body is. And if I can find a few things that I know how to fix and I can give you the help in, that you need in that area, by the grace of God, your body will do the rest. Right. So it's keep it simple, stupid. Try to find the simple things. Don't get too crazy and complicated. And yes. uh, you, you'll find things that uh, that maybe the, the regular doctor is not looking for. You know, you go to a specialist. If you see your cardiologist, he's going to check out your heart and your blood vessels. Right. But he might not yes. be looking at your digestive tract. He might not be recognizing that because of failure to digest different foods, you're not able to produce the right HDLs. Right, you're not able to produce the protective uh, antioxidants that your body needs in in the blood vessel, and so he's trying to fight a battle without realizing there's another system that's affecting his his cardiovascular system that he's looking at. So that's why we do need uh, an integrative approach in yes. healthcare. And when doctors talk to each other, it's wonderful. Today I got off the phone with a neurosurgeon, a uh, spinal surgeon rather, and he was very happy for the work 
that I had to do in sharing with him. And you know what? If we have that open line of communication, you know who benefits the most? The patient. The patient. The patient. We want the patient to do well. You know, we want the patient to get better. Yes. Now, you have recently, you you earned a post-doctorate uh, in, in uh, internal disorders, okay? Yeah. And that's mostly for the gut. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, so yes. diagnosis of any internal disorder, not not just the gut. That would be if your thyroid is dysfunctional, mm -hmm. we, we should be able to determine that through blood work and other testing, temperatures, et cetera. Um, it's not just the gut. So it's yes. do we find, do we, do, a, a, do we need to do an EKG? Do we need to do a peripheral artery exam? Are we finding, these are all internal things, right? So uh, the DAPC, Diplomated American Chiropractic Board of Internists, is just helping you to be a better diagnostician of any kind of disorder. So that's what it helped me to do. It helps me to better diagnose whatever. Um, some things I can treat, some things I can't. For example, uh, mm -hmm. some people will, will see a rheumatologist for their rheumatoid arthritis, and that's fine. But the medications are the way you're going to have to go. That's their treatment. Yes, and, 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 we know, I mean, and, we, and we know that some of these medications give people side effects and, and, and maybe destroying your liver or something. They all, they all do. Um, there are cases that, frankly, I couldn't fix with there was such bad RA. There are other cases of RA where we were able to mitigate the symptoms and help people get better through changes in diet and helping their GI tract to heal and kind of modulating their immune system. Uh, it's, you know, the body is an amazing thing. It's not always easy to turn it off when it starts to attack itself. That's what autoimmune disease is. Yes. So we see more of that more than ever. And, you know, um, I'd like to recommend something just so that people have a better idea about vaccines because vaccines are sometimes the source of a lot of our autoimmunity today, our autoimmune yeah. diseases, mm -hmm. which are unfortunately much, much more prevalent. And the reason we believe is that the vaccines that are given to children um, are so extensive that they can be damaging to your immune system. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, there's a, uh, a website called the Children's Health Defense.org. And Robert Kennedy Jr. has done a lot of research to help us. That's Children's Health Defense.org. And if you look that up, you'll find out why you got to be very careful about vaccines and learn a little bit about them because we have way too much autoimmunity this today. And it's, so it, it, it's called Children, Children's Children Health Defense. Defense.org. Yep. And it's a great website, and it's a, you'll learn a lot there about, you know, how what things are affecting children's health, and particularly about vaccinations, which to me are uh, are, are troubling, to say the least. I mean, we don't yes. have time to discuss that, but just the, the reason I bring it up is because we do have autoimmune disorders that are, um, that are and, today, right? And we, and we are seeing so many of these things popping up yeah. a lot. Much more autism today and much more autoimmunity. These are, yes. these yes. are vaccines. So we need, we need to address the, yeah. these ailments and go, go to the root, go to the, the root cause. Now, right. in your profession, what are the most common ailments that you see in your practice? The most common ailments I see are spinal disc disorders. Okay. Spinal disc disorders, whether it's a degenerative disc or a herniated disc or a bulging disc or a torn disc, those are the most common things because um, chiropractic has been associated with spinal care more than anything else. And so when people do have a spinal injury, they immediately think of chiropractic. It's not until they become educated as to what I do that they start referring people with other kinds of disorders, whether it be headaches or GI problems, you know, or uh, joint or knee pain, but um, certainly spinal disorders is the number one thing I see, and it's usually related to the discs. Okay, and what about uh, digestive disorders? Because you're a nutritionist too, and um, I know coming to you, uh, you, you do something, um, you do tests with stool. Mm -hmm. uh, name some of the tests that you do. Um, well, so you that sensitivity you test, you can do a food sensitivity test by blood where we can check you for 200 foods and see if any of those foods are, are causing um, your body to react to them abnormally, right? Yes. 
Yes. Uh, and along with that test, we do an, a leaky gut test called the Zonulin test, which mm -hmm. will be if your gut is leaky. Um, okay. We do a stool test to, to see if you have any parasites, if you have dysbiosis, which means abnormal balancing or imbalancing of your uh, of all the good bacteria, the gut, the gut flora. We see if you have enough protection on the lining of your GI tract that's measured. Um, we can see if you have inflammation in your bowels. Wow. There's a lot of really neat things, and it's a simple test. It's a fee that the people can pay. It's about $350 that you pay to the lab, and you can learn a lot about your body by testing your stool, really learn a lot about what you need to do if you need an enzyme. Uh, the other kind of disorders that we'll see with the GI tract are reflux disorder or GERD gastroesophageal reflux, people get heartburn, they constantly get that pain yes. after eating or before eating. We can treat that without using Nexium or any of the other protonic medications because those are bad because they block your body's enzyme from being produced. Not a good choice. So we have to treat that. And but, we this that. But, this, but this is wonderful. Yeah. You know, people don't realize, you know, well, you're, you're a special chiropractor. And, and you're doing functional medicine because people go to the regular doctors, the regular MD, and they just do a blood test and uh, and they just leave and they, they they have so many ailments. But what I like about your practice, mm -hmm. you are you are treating the, the the total person. You're treating everything about them. You know because the gut the spine, and when you see something that is um, beyond your expertise, you you recommend like you recommend them to a specialist. And yeah. I love that because you, know, you, know, you, know, you don't have to do um, either or or completely independently of, of medicine. Yes. I don't do that. I, I encourage people to have their own medical doctor. I'm not some kind of radical that's opposed to all <laughs> that at all. Not at all. But just yeah. to be able to include us as a part of their healthcare delivery team, I think that makes a lot of sense. So this way you have a balance of both the medical approach where sometimes you need it. Look, I had to send somebody today. I told you she had a spinal tumor. Thank God for the, the oncologist and the surgeons that might be able to help her, right? It's beyond my realm of care. But but we do we need, need to work together, right? If you fall out of an air, if you fall out of a, of a building and many things are broken, you're going to need an orthopedist to put you back together. It's yes. beyond chiropractic, right? But, yes. um, you know, other things in sports injury care, you can come to me for. Now, now going back to this person that you recognize the tumor. So you, you did an x-ray and yeah. then you saw the tumor and then you and you told her to go to the specialist. What we saw, uh, what we saw in this young, this lady's case was that we saw a fracture that uh, had existed before, but for some reason had recurred. The same broken vertebrae in the middle of her back, around T6, which is just between the shoulder blades. She ended up with a fracture. It happened about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and then, for no apparent reason, without a fall, she started to develop new pain there. Mm. So we x-rayed her, and I didn't, I didn't like the look of the x-ray, so I ordered a CAT scan. The CAT scan confirmed that there was more damage. We ordered an MRI. The MRI confirmed that it was some type of tumor, and that's why we went down the path. I also did something called a bone scan. Are you familiar with a bone scan? So a bone scan injects um, some radioactive material, a very tiny trace amount of radioactive material, and it mm -hmm. goes right to the area where – New bone is forming because old because there's a fracture or a tumor, and it did show a little bit of that. So we we did all the right things to get her in the right direction, and now she's in the care of uh, two medical doctors, two fine doctors who are you know going to take good care of our patient. But I need I need them. You know I don't live on an island. I don't live by myself. You know we well, all need each other. And if we have a spirit of cooperation. You're going to get yes. the best care. And uh, what I like now, when I started chiropractic, it was different. There is an open line of communication mm -hmm. between um, medical doctors and myself. And um, that's the way it should be. Praise the Lord. But you are very thorough. 
Dr. Manfredi. You know, I tell people I, I have to be thorough because I'm not that good. I have. I need all the tests. I disagree with that. I don't know. I think you, it's true. you have a spirit of excellence upon your life, and uh, and you're compassionate. You love people, and you want to see them whole. So you I go to the I root. Love. I do love people. You do. You do love people. I don't want people to be hurting, and I certainly don't want people to lose their their soul. So. In addition to helping their body, we also try to encourage people to seek the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Uh, without him, none of this is possible. Now, now, I want you to talk a little bit about divine healing. We talk a lot about natural healing. As a Christian, no, we know there, there, there are gifts of healing. There I are. I want you to talk about yeah. that. I know you have gifts of healing, the natural and the divine gifts well, you know, um, God is not a respecter of persons. And the Bible does say that uh, by the blood and the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. So um, accessing divine healing comes with faith. And faith is a gift of God as well. So mm -hmm. we, not all men have faith, right, Jude? Not all men have faith. The Bible no. Says but all men have an access to faith if they want it. All men and women can have faith. So Jesus said to many people, he said, go your way, your faith has made you whole. So all I can say is God is our healer. Yes. If we can trust him, if we can seek him, he, he can and does heal us. In most cases, God heals people when they ask him. There are rare cases of exceptions. We can read about St. Paul's or other people who for some reason have had to fight with a thorn in the flesh. But I've seen miracles. I have witnessed Jesus Christ healing my nephew. Um, I've seen him healing uh, myself, my wife, um, my pastor, um, just regular people who I know have had miracles. Uh, so let's keep faith alive. Let's trust God when we, when we can't trace him, when we can't figure him out, we can just trust him. And so when we call on his name, like the Bible says, I called on the Lord and he healed me, you know, so I've been healed. I, I'll just give you one testimony. I, I was sick. Um, I'm only, I weigh about 180 pounds. I was running at the time. I was down to like 170 and then I got sick. I lost another 20 pounds. I was about 150 some odd pounds and I'm six feet tall and I look like a skeleton. Yes. And, um, I didn't know what was wrong. Um, I did go for a medical examination. They tested my stool. I was just sick, sick so that nothing stayed in me. Everything just went through me like water and I could not digest and I was getting very tired and very sick and this went on for about a month. Um, <laughs> so I had been praying and um, it wasn't happening yet. So a man called me, mm -hmm. uh, who I happen to know um, as a Christian. And he just wanted to know how I was doing. He was saying hello, saying uh, he was a good friend of mine. He came to faith uh, along with me in 1978. So he said to me, Ralph, how you doing? I said, actually, Gary, I'm, I'm very sick. Uh, and he and he's began to speak to me. And he said, you know, Ralph, this sickness is not of God. And I said, mm -hmm. and he began to speak almost prophetically, which he never did. Yes. And, and to speak into my life and tell me that right now the Lord Jesus commanded this sickness to go. And honest to goodness, Judy, as I sat there on the phone, an incredible, powerful warmth, strong warmth went from yes. the top of my head to the sole of my feet. And I just received healing. I got up from that moment. I had normal bowel movements. I digested. I regained. My the Lord. It was a complete miracle just like that. And uh, that was just my personal healing. Uh, it was amazing. I know it was true. I know it was God. I saw my, my, my nephew who was actually flatlined in the ICU. Wow. I was told he wasn't going to make it. I, I saw him and God spoke to me, gave me a word about him. So I've seen God divinely heal people. I've been divinely healed. So if you're sick today and no doctor can fix you, including me, we can still pray. Amen. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Yes. Uh, but be before we end the broadcast, yeah. I want you to pray for anybody 
who is looking on or anybody who's going to look at this recording because we know some people are going to look at it after we get okay. off live. Now, um, we're in the middle of a pandemic. As a nutritionist, as a, a doctor in functional medicine, uh, could you give us some suggestions as a, a prevention health protocol, you know, how to take care of our immune system? What would you yes. suggest? Yeah, I can do that. I would, I would begin with some simple things like vitamin D at four to 6,000 IUs a day. Mm -hmm. Vitamin A at 10 to 15,000 IUs a day. Vitamin C at two to 4,000 uh, milligrams a day. Um, I would use N-acetylcysteine, that's N-A-C. You can buy a bottle of that, N-A-C. It helps uh, mm -hmm. with the liver, cleanse itself. And finally, uh, magnesium at about 600 milligrams a day. If you took that protocol, you would be strengthening your immune system. That's, that's, there are other things that can strengthen your immune system. I'll add one other uh, known immune support, and that's called olive leaf extract. Olive, olive leaf, leaf. Yes, extract. we. So I if you took the things that I just said, uh, and you were faithful with them, and you got yourself some rest, enough <laughs> six, seven, or eight, preferably seven or eight hours of sleep every night, drank plenty of water, I think, and you're not smoking, hopefully, and certainly, certainly not drinking to excess, I think that with the, the, the beautiful immune system that God has given you, you would fight off any virus and, and win. I really Praise believe that. Praise if the Lord. Look at the people that have died. They are very compromised people. They are not in good health, and they are not taking anywhere near the regimen I just mentioned. Yes. So I don't think you need to fear. Um, I do think you need to be active about taking good care of your health. And um, that's a fact. And, and be proactive because, proactive. yeah, some, uh, can you repeat the vitamin A dosage? Or did you say 10,000? 10 15,000 IUs per day. 10 to 10 to 15,000 15, IUs per day. Okay. Yeah. This is great because people just want to need to know what nutrients to put in their body. And that's not a lot. Out. No. They double that. That's yes. not a lot. So that's, that's, a, that's a moderate amount. Uh, four to 6,000 IUs of vitamin D is not extreme. Some people think that, you know, 6,000 might be, it's not. Um, vitamin C, two to 4,000 milligrams a day, that is not extreme. That is a water-soluble vitamin, very easy to get rid of if you, if you don't need it. Magnesium is the most depleted nutrient in the body, and it's very important for all immune reactions and all the chemical reactions in the body. And so I... I, 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 I I didn't know that. I didn't know about magnesium. I know right. it's good for the heart. You know, you need to. Yeah. Magnesium potentiates vitamin D. Magnesium helps the vitamin D work better. How do you like that? Oh. Yeah. Well, this, this is great, Dr. Manfredi. This is excellent because we want people to be whole. We don't want them to just go and, and take medication. God has made this body amazingly complex and beautiful and wonderful. It's a miracle. So we want to take care of the temple. This is, as Christians, we know this, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have given this beautiful temple, but, but some people neglect it. We focus on the Spirit. destroy it. There are people who do things that are destroying their body, and we have to come against those things. Now, those things would include abuse of drugs, um, smoking cigarettes, uh, mm -hmm. anything that's, that's damaging to the body. So we cannot do that. The Lord has warned us about that in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, right? Yes. If it destroys this temple, God will destroy. This mm -hmm. is the temple. And uh, it's a beautiful thing, the body. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to look beautiful on the outside to be beautiful. God has made you beautiful. And, you know, that's, that's really what you got to know. And, uh, you know, if you appreciate your body and you take it seriously, I'm sure that it will work well for you. You know, that's true. What, what, what about stress, chronic stress and the immune yeah. system? Well, who, who better to handle stress than, than the Lord, right? I, I love mean, that. Talk about that. 
it's a tough it's a tough world out there, right? So um, when I'm afraid, David said, I will trust in thee. Yes. Right? So there's there's things that can make people afraid. We're human beings. We're not immune to uh, fear and worry and anxiety. And so uh, one of my favorite people was uh, Derek Prince. And mm -hmm. uh, Derek Prince used to talk about the fact that when you – put your trust in God, when you really lean on God, when you are like Gideon was at the waters, uh, when he was uh, told to let all the men go, he had 30,000 men mm -hmm. that he was going to go to battle with, and God made him go down to 100 men so that he would fight a battle that he could never win except God was on his side. Uh, when you know Beside, beyond the shadow of a doubt that God is on your side, you have nothing to fear. Anxiety will just whisk away from you. And Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. And his peace, right? Yes. His perfect peace. The Bible says, thou wilt keep in perfect peace him whose mind is stayed upon thee because he trusts in thee. I had to get to a place in my life one day where I really decided to trust Jesus Christ and stop worrying. And uh, it's it's a beautiful place to be. I, I would wish that for everyone who's watching. Trust yes. Jesus Christ. Stop worrying. He's got you. Whether in this world or the next, the Lord will take care of you. That That's true. And it's right. important for people to hear that because both people who are believers and non-believers, even in the midst of this pandemic, if they, they're listening to the, the news over and over, fear, anxiety, enter in. That's but right. You just quoted the script here from Isaiah, I believe it's 26, right? Verse 3. Verse 3. The Lord will keep us in perfect peace. Whose mind, whose mind is, is stayed upon. Well. Yes. Because and, and, Yes, see, we, we <laughs> trust him. We, we got to trust him. And I, I, I'm thinking of Psalm 91, you know, when we are in the secret place. You know, when, I, when, I, when I was a young man, I went through a period of time um, as a teenager, made some mistakes, doing some drinking, smoking marijuana, and uh, it went, went through a tough time. I have to just say that to people who might have gone through the same thing. I hope I can identify with them. And it was a place where my confidence in myself and my own mind was removed. Mm. I felt like Nebuchadnezzar, you know, I went out into the into the field and became like someone with a mind of uh, of an animal. And uh, it was God's way of bringing me to a humble place. And I thank him for it. And I realize now that, you know, this eight pounds or whatever the weight of our brains are, is uh, this this area, this organ, this sense organ, the magnificent organ of the brain is a wonderful thing. But it's not God. That's God, true. Created, God created you and he created your brain and your trust is to be in him, not just your own abilities, not just your ability to figure things out. And that's why Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. Amen. Yes. Lord, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That, that verse changed my life uh, when I was uh, 19, 20 years old. And I'm um, 62. God has never let me down. Um, I've been through a lot of difficult things. I've raised five kids, seen a lot of illnesses and difficulties, but God has always been there for us, and he will Praise be there. God. He's healed Praise my children. He's healed my wife. He's healed Judy. He's healed Ken. God yes. is a God. God loves us. He's a great God. I love that. And, and on another note, before I have you pray, because I want you to pray, and I want – as, as you're led, as the Holy Spirit would lead you to pray with individ for individuals with different um, health challenges to, uh, as they come up, because I believe the Lord gives you, you have a word of knowledge in your life, okay? The gift of the word of knowledge as well as, as the gifts of healing. So I want you to pray. But before we go there, I admire something about you besides being a doctor, besides being a, 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 a mighty man of God, a great teacher of the word. But I noticed that you, you are such a good steward of your body. I want you to talk a little bit about 
you are cyclists. Yes. Talk, yes. talk, talk a little bit about keeping um, your body. Yeah. You know, we're we're um, called to be good stewards of whatever God's gifts, his, what the gifts he's given us, and, and that includes your health. And yes. so I, I really enjoy uh, exercising and fitness uh, stuff. So today I got back from a 27-mile bike ride. It was the most beautiful day. The repeated, most beautiful day. Repeated, repeated 27 miles. Yeah, we did a nice cycle. My friend Ed and I, we rode through the hills of Sherman. Wow. And we had a most beautiful day of enjoying nature and enjoying fitness. You know, being able to do those kind of things is really a great gift. I don't take it for granted. But if you can exercise and you don't, that's on you. There are many people who are going to watch this tonight who probably aren't healthy enough to exercise yet. But, you know, you can get there. And for those of us who are healthy enough to exercise, we have to have a commitment. Um, you know, regular exercise has been shown to be the best, the best, not the second best, the best therapy against depression. I love the it. Therapy against depression. So if I can get you exercising, whether it's lifting weights or using your elliptical machine or riding your bike, you're going to feel better. That's yes. great, right? Because yes. I want to be alive and alert and enthusiastic for Jesus as long as I'm here. So Amen. my body is important. I have to take care of my body. Uh, my, my pastor knows this. <laughs> my friends who are in the, in the ministries know this. Some of them are really good at it and some of them not so yes. good. But yes. it's really hard for me to practice um, I'm sorry to preach about you know telling people to exercise and take it if I don't do it myself. So I, I, you, we, we got to live the life. We can't you know just talk about it. And, and you know I give people the 3D program. Check this out. Yes. If you desire to be healthy and be fit, if you have the discipline to do it, it will become a delight. I, 3D program: desire, discipline, delight. I enjoyed my ride today to no end. Tomorrow yes. tonight I might go lift some weights and it will not be it will not be to me a chore a chore or a drudgery. It'll be fun. And that's just the way it works out to be. You'll see that's true. Once you get into it, you'll like it. I'm I'm putting this in the comments. Desire, discipline and delight. Discipline and delight. The 3D program for exercise. Okay. <laughs> Putting this in, I hope people can see it in in in, in the chat. But exercise, because yes. I, I, you know we tell people and and people don't want to hear listen, but this is so important. Yeah, and it's I, only exercise is your own reward. You know, like when you paint a building or you paint a room and you get all finished. You can say, wow, that looks really good. I'm so glad I did that, right? Yes. And you're done with exercising, even right after you get a reward. It's very quick. Yeah. You do. You feel I, better. I, I, I love it. You know, I don't know if some people just are more, you know, just love to exercise. And some people say that they have to work at it. But you said we start with a desire, discipline, and delight. And I can remember when I was going to my ballet classes, the day, uh, Dr. Manfredi, that I did not feel like going. Because of the discipline, I pushed myself. I, I drove to that uh, ballet uh, school. That's it. And, and would you believe that day I had the best ballet workout? I enjoyed it. But yeah. I, I, if I had listened to how I felt, yes, I would have missed that. Yeah. See, I, mean, I, I believe that, that God's in those those tiny little moments of discipline that He gives you the grace, which yes, mind power to push through that laziness and that inertia and get there. And you're right; those are the best workouts, and you get better. Yes, get and, better. I and I remember, and I remember, Dr. Manfredi, I I was a woman uh, in my early 50s doing this ballet with kids at 16 years old and 17 17 year olds but it's just like the desire I then the discipline and I had a ball Amen. now as we close I want you to 
pray for people with health issues. I want you to pray for people who are, have been uh, the COVID because God has given you the gifts of healing and anything that the Holy Spirit leads you to uh, pray about. Should we pray now? Yes. Okay, let's pray, Lord. Father God, I thank you. Lord, uh, on my heart, I want to lift up every person who's watching who's been afflicted by the, vi the virus. Uh, in yes, the Lord. Name of Jesus. We know, Lord, that they mostly have come through this. We pray for anyone who has any residual symptoms. And in the name of Jesus, we bind those. Yes. Release your healing to them this day in the name of Jesus. Everyone who's watching, you're not watching by accident. The Lord is speaking towards you. And uh, receive your healing and get past this in the name of Jesus. Yes. And give God all the praise. We also want to pray for those who are suffering with chronic Lyme disease, Lord Jesus. Mm. Yes. Um, people who have no answers, who've gone everywhere and anywhere and yet they cannot find their way out. Lord, right now, we pray that you extend your grace, send forth your word, touch that one that's watching. Yes, Lord. With limes and no one can fix. But Lord, give them the faith. Yes, yes. To, even as to touch the hem of your garment tonight. And yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We pray for that one who has irreparable bowel problems, Lord. Mm. one who just has constant bloating, pain, dysfunction of the bowels. Yes, Lord. Uh, normal amounts of gas or flatulence. People who just, especially that one, Lord, who is in pain and no one can fix her. It's a woman. We just pray for her tonight. Yes, in Lord. Jesus, and we thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Tonight yes. is the night, Lord. Tonight is her night to be healed, and we thank yes. you. Yes, yes, Lord. Uh, Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you're leading um, these those people, Lord, with the with all the nerve injuries, mm. the ones who, uh, who have been sustained uh, a back pain that no one can fix. Yes, we Lord. To you tonight, Father. You know how to fix their spines, and so tonight we pray for each one. Everyone yes. who's broken, everyone who's injured, who's herniated, who's sprained, Lord, we pray for each one that there would be healing tonight, that yes, the Lord. age would be turned on this illness, there would be, be begin a new chapter of healing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus. Heaven, Jesus. Let's be yes. out over this, this medium that you've given us, and we give it back to you, Lord, that you would touch and heal those watching tonight. Who yes, need Lord. Healing. And the ones we didn't know that, that you didn't reveal, Lord, we pray for them as well, especially those who suffer with migraine headaches. We yes. Pray for them in the yes, mighty Lord. name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank, Amen. thank you, Dr. Manfredi. I really appreciate you being on. And I would like you to just give your contact information. I know you, you have a busy practice, but... Um, <laughs> If anyone would like to come to your center. Sure. You can uh, find us at nfchiro.com. That's N as in Nancy, F as in Frank, Cairo, C-H-I-R-O.com. That's my uh, website. My phone number is 203-746-6551. And uh, I work at 88 Route 37, New Fairfield, Connecticut, at the New Fairfield Chiropractic Center. And uh, we'd love to give you a consultation if you need one. Um, and, uh, yes, we'll try to get you in as soon as possible. We are very busy, but we're thankful to uh, still have room for new patients. So, and, Judy, I want to thank you because you're such a sweetheart. And uh, thank you. To see you. It's always a blessing at my office. And, and also want to thank uh, you, your, your husband, Ken, for loaning you out to all of us on Wonderfully Whole, people who, who really – are going to get a lot of uh, blessing through your through your ministry. I really appreciate your ministry. Thank you very much. Praise God. And I thank you for taking the time to come on and be a blessing. Yes, ma'am. And we give God the glory. So we close and... God bless. God bless. Have a good night. You Bye. too. Bye. See you soon.
Yes. Bye-bye.